Hey everybody, yeah, it's a Friday afternoon. I had out of town uh, doctor's appointment yesterday. Got a new camera here. I'm not sure how it's going to work. Uh, it's kind of odd. There's no no way. I got to go clear the back of the camera to turn it on and off. It's going to be a bit awkward, but uh, anyway, today I'm going to do the second edition of the Baird Stone Ishi Japanese Green Tea IPA. Um, I'm sure there's a date on here somewhere, but I know it's fairly fresh, just came out. Um, anyway, from the, from the bottle and on the website, it says our style of brewing has always been about taking chances. It's an extension of our what if mentality, wherein we ask ourselves, what would happen if we did things differently in the brew house? Such as fermenting with a different strain of yeast, or in the case of this beer, incorporating whole leaf green tea imported from Japan. The answer embodied in this IPA when we first released it in 2011 was something truly magnificent, delicious, and is proven by the reissued edition you hold in your hand in 2015, worth brewing again. But what if we changed it? Yes, it's risky, riskier to change something most people thought to be liquid perfection, including our two-time collaborators, Brian Baird of Japan's Baird Brewing Company and Toshi Ishii, a former stone brewer and the founder of Guam's Ishii Brewing Company. But we found that when we approached with cautious curiosity and logic-driven creativity, reward often follows such a risk. And there's, there's some more, I'll put it down below, but they apparently changed their hops from a New Zealand hop to a Hoga hop from Australia. It says the 2011 version was 9.2 percent. This, this, this year's version is 10.1. Uh, so 20, 2011 used New Zealand Pacifica hops, and 2015 this one used Australian Helga hops. So let's get this uh, get this IPA in a glass and see what we got. I've seen it on the shelf for a little while, so I know it's not quite as fresh as it should be, but uh, ten point one percent. I'm probably not going to drink the whole thing. Probably stop about there. Tap this thing up. Yeah, we got a nice, um, kind of golden orange color. Seems to be a moderate around a carbonation uh, streaming up. Got a couple fingers, maybe two and a half of a kind of a dense, uh, kind of rocky looking head. Uh, looks like it might stick around a while, leave some lacing. Nice looking IPA, so let me get a nose on it. Oh, well, there's big citrus notes on this. There's grapefruit and lemon zest and maybe some orange peel. Uh, definitely getting that uh, that green tea in there. It's kind of a light, um, light, earthy, almost floral note to it. Um, really nice uh, kind of herbal, grassy earthiness to it. Uh, some light, light pine notes in there. Uh, just a little bit of some little bit of some malt, like a light caramel and some bready notes. Nice, nice smelling beer. There's a lot going on here, so let's get a taste. Okay, now that tastes, tastes like it smells, only even more so. I'm getting some really big uh, grapefruit right up front. Uh, again, those all those citrus notes. Uh, Lemon zest, the orange peel, uh, some nice pine notes in there. Maybe a bit of uh, light pepper. The the green tea is there, but um, kind of a herbal, floral, uh, grassy note, but uh, not super strong. Does definitely doesn't interfere with the with the hops. You can tell this is an IPA. Um, Again, there's those light malts in there, uh, primarily caramel and some bready notes. Um, but uh, got a nice um, kind of spicy pine herbal uh, bitterness on the finish. Um, and some lingering notes of those, uh, of those uh, citrus, uh, the grapefruit and lemon and orange. Um, seems to be about a 
medium mouthfeel, medium body, medium uh, carbonation. Uh, hand's gone down to maybe a little bit of a finger, but something tells me it might regenerate, regenerates a little bit, leaving some nice, nice lacing down the glass. Um, kind of a, a smooth, crisp, um, kind of sticky mouthfeel to it. Um, the alcohol is pretty well hidden for 10.1%. Uh, You're getting a little bit of warming on the finish, but um, that's about it. So let me sit. I will uh, cap this bottle up and uh, sip on the rest of this. I'll be back in a while with the final thoughts and grade. Okay, I'm back. It's been, oh, 20 minutes, maybe half an hour or so. I've been sipping on this. This is a really nice, uh, interesting IPA. I don't think I've ever had a, a green tea IPA before. Um, it's got a really nice complexity to it. Um, but everything's um, nicely balanced. Got the citrus, some um, floral hop notes, um, the earthy uh, tea light notes. Um, some moderate malt flavors, um, uh, very smooth, uh, very uh, very crisp to drink for the for the 10.1% uh, ABV. Um, the green tea tea flavors there, but um, it uh, sort of dissipates a little bit, and it, it really doesn't overpower the the hops at all. Um, you notice it; it adds a nice touch to it, but uh, it uh, leaves leaves the hops there, so you know you're drinking a no, you're drinking a big IPA. Um, after all, overall, I think this is a pretty, pretty uh, solid brew. Uh, it's got a best buy date of uh, four two on it, so it's about two weeks before its best buy date. So I'm sure it's uh, somewhat different, fresh, but still pretty, still pretty darn good right now. So I'm gonna give the Stone Baird Ishii Collaboration Beer, or Japanese Green Tea IPA. I'm gonna give it a good, uh, good solid uh, nine out of ten. Decent drinkable um, IPA. Uh, like I said, I've never had a green tea IPA before, but um, this is a good one. Um, oh yeah, and uh, happy Pi Day tomorrow for everybody. Three point one four one five, and you can go a little further if you do something at a certain hour and minute. But uh, anyway. Um, yeah, 9 out of 10, so until next time, everybody, cheers. Let's keep drinking good beers. I haven't been living in an apartment for over 30 years. This is something I'm getting used to, so. Dog goes off when the neighbors move, so. Until next time, everybody. Okay, I'm back. It's been, oh, 20 minutes, maybe half an hour or so. I've been sipping on this. This is a really nice, uh, interesting IPA. I don't think I've ever had a, a green tea IPA before. Um, it's got a really nice complexity to it. Um, but everything's um, nicely balanced. Got the citrus, some um, floral hop notes, um, the earthy uh, tea light notes. Um, some moderate malt flavors, um, uh, very smooth, uh, very uh, very crisp to drink for the for the 10.1% uh, ABV. Um, the green tea, tea flavors there, but um, it uh, sort of dissipates a little bit, and it, it really doesn't overpower the the hops at all. Um, you notice it; it adds a nice touch to it, but uh, it uh, leaves leaves the hops there, so you know you're drinking a no, you're drinking a big IPA. Um, after all, overall, I think this is a pretty, pretty uh, solid brew. Uh, it's got a best buy date of uh, four two on it, so it's about two weeks before its best buy date. So I'm sure it's uh, somewhat different, fresh, but still pretty, still pretty darn good right now. So I'm gonna give the Stone Baird Ishii Collaboration Beer or Japanese Green Tea IPA. I'm gonna give it a good, uh, good solid uh, 
9 out of 10. Decent, drinkable um, IPA. Um, like I said, I've never had a green tea IPA before, but um, this is a good one. Um, oh yeah, and uh, happy Pi Day tomorrow for everybody. 3.1415. And you can go a little further if you do something at a certain hour and minute, but uh, anyway, um, yeah, 9 out of 10, so until next time everybody, cheers. Let's keep drinking good beers. I haven't lived in an apartment for over 30 years, this is something I'm getting used to, so dog goes off when the neighbors move, so until next time everybody.